One of the biggest updates to ever come to all Tesla vehicles is coming very soon. You may know it as the holiday update, you may know it as the one with a couple of flames, or you might know it as the long-awaited and very long-rumored version 11. This is the one with the redesign. This is the one with the new features. This is supposed to give us a total overhaul of the software in our Teslas, and it's supposed to hopefully maybe be coming very soon because of the wider rollout of full self-driving and these new FSD visualizations and this sort of mind of car view. Uh, version 11 should be hopefully right around the corner that should bring with it a lot of new features. So in this video, let me break down the biggest features coming to all Tesla vehicles with version 11, some of the best stuff to get excited about and uh, some of the other stuff that we're learning that might just be a little disappointing. Right off the bat, it's been almost a year since we were promised that version 11 was going to be launching, but in that year, some more information has come out that has made this a bit more exciting, and there have been some sort of elements that actually gave us a really good look at what version 11 is going to look like, specifically with the new refreshed Model S and Model X interiors. Now, supposedly, the software running on these cars is version 11, or at least the look of what version 11 is going to look like, and it has the same functionality, basically giving you sort of a whole new redesigned very skeuomorphic look and it's a departure from what we've seen Teslas in years past and I can't remember in the last couple of years maybe I'm wrong uh, there hasn't been a significant software update like this where everything looks different everything has changed we have gotten a couple of minor updates over the years that have added new features and sort of changed the looks a bit but this is much more major basically now you're getting this sort of darker dock at the bottom that houses different icons for different apps and you now sort of have this windowed experience as well where you you can sort of drag and drop different applications into different snap points to create different windows and sort of run things side by side. So you could have the browser next to the map or music and it basically looks like you can just sort of drag and drop and move things around and sort of resize sort of to your liking. It looks really nice and it looks very intuitive, very speedy and fast and should be really nice as sort of a nice uh, coat of paint, I guess, and a nice refresh coming with this software update. Now, in addition to that redesign, another big area here that should be getting a lot of features and one it seems like Tesla really kind of uh, put their engineers to work on is the media support. As of right now, there is a couple of different streaming options. I think it's like Tuner and TuneIn, TuneIn, Stitcher, there's Spotify Premium, Slacker. It's a little confusing on what the streaming services are, but basically the most popular one is Spotify Premium. But again, as the name suggests, you have to have a Spotify Premium account in order to use Spotify inside of the car. You can, of course, stream from Amazon Music or Apple Music or YouTube Music or various other media services, but you have to do that over Bluetooth. That is supposedly until now. We have seen some leaked photos suggesting that Tesla is adding multiple new services into the media pane inside of version 11, like Apple Music and some other services here that'll give you sort of Tesla first party support for other streaming services. And hopefully Spotify is in here as well, and maybe Pandora and others uh, that are free and don't require a paid fee or paid subscription to use. That has been one of the biggest, most longstanding complaints in the community is just being limited to just Spotify Premium. So that would be really nice to see as well. And I'm also hoping that they sort of up the bit rate on it because I don't know if you've noticed this, but if you listen um, to something over Bluetooth and something over Tuner, why do I keep saying Tuner? Tune in and Stitcher. Then you listen to something over Spotify. You'll notice that the quality difference is apparent. At least I hear in my standard range plus, and that is a subpar audio experience as compared to the long range and the premium models. Uh, so hopefully they up the bit rate a bit so you get higher quality music streaming and higher quality fidelity. And that would be really nice to see instead of the new and improved music app inside of version 11. Now, there's also been some rumors that Tesla's could be gaining Sirius XM satellite support as well. And there were some photos that went around from Model S owners who got an update that included Sirius XM in their cars, and many were wondering if this would come to the Model 3 and the Model Y as well. Now, one big caveat here and something to keep in mind is that the Sirius XM support seems to be a hardware thing that's built into the Model S and presumably the Model X as well, that they have a satellite receiver that enabled them to uh, pick up uh, the transmitted uh, channels from Sirius XM. There was some speculation that, that we could see this on the Model 3 and Model Y because uh, you could stream it over the internet and sort of pick up the channels that way, but uh, even though the capability is there, it doesn't look like that's going to be a thing. So it's kind of a bummer for those who are interested in satellite radio. It seems like the only way to get it right now and for the foreseeable future without getting a Model S or X is to just stream it over Bluetooth. There doesn't seem like there's going to be a first-party app coming anytime in the near future, not with version 11, I'm sorry to say.
Another big improvement here is a new quick control sort of control center area that allows you to sort of do a bunch of different functions of the car in one button press as opposed to three or four. There's no longer uh, different uh, settings here uh, hidden behind menus and having to activate different things. You now sort of have this new and improved menu system that allows you to do different parts and different functions of things in the car much easier with just a button press or two. Uh, new and improved and much better than what we have currently right now in the current Tesla software. Now, another interesting part of version 11 that could be coming is a public FSD beta button. As of right now, at the time of filming this video, uh, to get the FSD beta button, you have to obviously have FSD and you have to be on the latest software update and uh, you have to jump through some hoops in order to get approved for the program. I'm curious to see what changes Tesla could make with the wide rollout of version 11 on the FSD beta program. Will all uh, owners, regardless of FSD subscription status or FSD purchase status, have access to this button? they can basically do a maybe a, a purchase inside of the car to get those features? Will you be able to sort of apply and then join within 24 hours or 12 hours or retroactively collect different driving stats? As of right now, this is all very new. The safety score information and all that is still in beta and still very new. I'm curious in version 11 if this will get a lot easier and a lot more streamlined within the software. If you'll be able to sort of tap a button, join the beta program, or have uh, access to more advanced features. Uh, curious to see how Tesla chooses to handle that uh, as version 11 becomes more widespread and if they want to recruit more people into the version uh, 10 or whatever uh, beta of full self-driving or if they want to keep that sort of tucked away and hidden away so not too many people join. Now, one of the most hotly requested features that has been in the making for years, of course, has to be waypoints. And Elon Musk has said time and time again that waypoints are coming into the Tesla map software. And it looks like, hopefully, fingers crossed, with version 11, that is actually going to be the case. Same story for a couple of other features here as well. Uh, a bird's eye view of the car, uh, the repeater cam situation where you could see sort of the corresponding uh, camera from the left side or the right side as you made your way uh, with the turn signal into the corresponding lane. And also, video conferencing. These are all a couple of features that Elon has sort of promised could be coming in a future software update, some specifically in version 11, and uh, these have sort of been in the pipeline for a while, so it seems like version 11 is really going to drop a lot of these features at once. A bunch of features, a major redesign, version 11 is shaping up to be pretty exciting, and also version 11 might just very well unlock the motors for the screen as well uh, in the Model S and Model X, and I've heard some conflicting reports on if those motors are software locked because, you know, the screen screen should be able to tilt in uh, the Model S and Model X, uh, and they don't right now. I've heard that either they're locked or they don't actually come with the motors and it's something that Tesla has to retrofit. Not sure what the case is with that, but hopefully in sort of this uh, massive update along with a bunch of bug fixes and improvements, this becomes a thing as well. And I think that's about it. There's a lot that has been speculated about version 11, a lot we know, a lot we don't know, but what we are sort of uh, banking on is a major redesign very similar to what we have in the new Model S, uh, basically this new interactive uh, menu system, a new way to sort of have windowed uh, views of apps, uh, sort of a dock at the bottom where you can sort of drag and drop things, as well as um, better media support for third-party services, hopefully some cool Easter eggs, and then hopefully things like waypoints and um, other camera angles as well, things that are very practical and should help the car get better. Um, and that's kind of what we know right now. Again, a lot of rumors on when this could launch. We're about a year uh, from when it was supposed to launch last year around Christmas time. It was the holiday update after all, so hopefully it drops sometime soon. But it seems like Tesla is getting closer and closer to finally patching this up, getting it ready, and shipping it out to all our cars, especially with the wider release of the FSD beta. And hey, the long uh, requested FSD beta button is finally here, so hopefully version 11 is right around the corner. Anyway, what are your guys' thoughts? What are you most excited to see in version 11? What do you hope that Tesla builds into the software update? What would make it the perfect update for you? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Rob Rosenfeld, and I will see you all in the next one.